Hello everybody, welcome to Bot Labs. In this video we will generate some slides from a slide deck file. So we can do something like this. Right, uh, in the last video I uh, showed how to center uh, output in the terminal uh, by calculating the, the width of the terminal and the height of the terminal and the width of the block and the height of the block and divide it by two and then center everything nicely. In this video we will read from uh, a file different slides. So I have went ahead here and copied this uh, script that I added to the show notes here. I added that to a file. This, by the way, is uh, the, the deck file. I like to call them deck files. That uh, creates the, the slide deck I showed in the beginning, or the slideshow I showed in the beginning here. So we can see that each uh, slide is defined on one line. So here, this is the first slide. Hello, everybody. The new line is def uh, defined with an underscore. The next slide, just a welcome. Then we have two lines and with some special colors and stuff here. Whoops. Blah, blah, blah. So I copied the show notes from YouTube, added it to this file. I also created an empty script here with just some helper functions for a printing error message here. That's what all this is about. Also added this uh, stupid death trap here. We get back to that in probably a later video. Um, also have, yeah, let's clean that out there. I have an empty file here called slide deck, and then we had the show note as I said here. So let's copy the content of the show note, add it to a function. We can call it show note. Uh, add that there, and then we can do echo. This is it. Show note. Save that, do this, make it a little bigger. And then I call this script Slider. It will be the name of this uh, slideshow application thing. So Slider, now I don't think we did see that uh, echo this is it here because we have a clear in our show note program there. Try it again, Slider. There we can see, this is it, then it executes our show note uh, function here. Okay, and if we wanted to, we could, um, because now show note always prints uh, this. Block is equal to the output of figlet block here. Ah, whatever. This is what will be centered, but if we change this to uh, this instead, and then we can do something maybe that's too long i'm not sure slide up and now it prints something here and it's not figleted because we never do any figlet uh, stuff here but we could just figlet put the, this in quotes and now it prints something and that of course means that we could easily create a loop or something here for um slide in one two three do done and then we change this to slide and that will give us this uh, three is the last uh, uh, element here in our list because that's how four really works you know you, you give it a list that will it will loop through and then it will uh, add the, the current list item to the variable defined defined here so yeah I think you, you get it uh, but if I scroll up here you can see that the other slides are there as well you can even do this and with our show note function here, it, it prints um, the output is equal to one page here because it adds uh, blank lines both above and uh, below the block printed. But uh, it's not much of a slideshow when we do this, it just we have to scroll them manually like this. So I used to do this, uh, I used to do a uh, 
read R S M one. Now it works like this. Now it goes into the loop, show note the first one, and then it waits for input here. Uh, and it waits for one character, that's what uh, N1 means here. So if I press any key, basically, that will satisfy read here, and then it will continue with the loop, show the next element here. So if I press any key, yeah, there are, I think I accidentally pressed two keys. So one key, F, one key, whatever, there and then it breaks out of the loop. But we still have the whole output here. So sometimes you, you, may, you might also want to use uh, clear here, and then it will become more like, even more like a sideshow. Now we don't have a, a bunch of output, but I also figured that we could, this is even better, to pipe the whole, the output of this whole loop which will be one long output containing three slides. Now it's using less instead because we pipe it into less and then we can use page up and page down to go back and forward in the history, which is something you couldn't do with a read loop. Uh, and it also, uh, it's much faster uh, painting uh, the, the window here, so to speak. So we will use less, but we're Instead of using this as a list, we want the list to be the content of a file where each line in that file should be uh, its own slide. So we could do slide one, slide two, slide three to start with here. Um, and one thing we can do is uh, make sure that our uh, script here that, that the argument to the script is uh, an existing file. So let's do that. Make a test, see if a file exists. Looking for a file in the variable deck file. Deck file isn't defined anywhere. Uh, so we can use this deck files colon equals dollar one, or maybe even dollar star. Uh, meaning it will sign the, the content of all arguments passed to the script uh, to the content of the variable deck file and if that file exists it's good or erx no such file no such file we didn't get, add any argument here but I am in the uh, right directory here, so we can do, let's do this, here we can see, this is the directory, and here we have this slide deck file, and that means we can do slide up, slide deck, one, two, three, it still doesn't read from the file, it just makes sure that we pass the file as the argument here. If we want to read from this file, uh, we could do it in different ways, we could do it like, uh, we could create an array called slides is equal to one, two, three. And then instead of writing it like this, we could do the same thing, achieving the same thing by doing this. Should also put quotes around this. So this will uh, generate the same result here, one, two, three, it will use this array. Uh, but we can also put the content of the file into an array instead uh, by using the command map file and redirecting the content of our file as the input for this map file command. And map file is a built-in uh, bash command, so you can use help map file to see the options available for that command. So read lines from standard input into an indexed array variable, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this will create an array out of deck file here, uh, but I also specify the name of the array we want to create here, here as the last argument to map file. So now when we run slide, uh, slide deck here, 
now you can see it prints uh, first slide is first line second slide second line third slide third line perfect um, one weird thing though with this uh, if we do this instead if we do if we do uh, we can do this and this and this we do echo here instead now let's remove this less also just want to show you an interesting thing is that map file it doesn't uh, it creates an array uh, and it uses new line as the delimiter for the array so each line in the file will be an array element but it doesn't remove the delimiter from the uh, elements and that means it adds uh, a new line to each element here and then echo also adds a new line by itself uh, and this is good to know that you can remove that um, trailing uh, delimiter if you use the T option with map file remove a trailing delimiter from each line red and the default delimiter is a new line you can also specify a different delimiter with a D option here so now if we do echo now it prints them like this so I always use uh, uh, dash T when I use map file okay good so now uh, what I would like to do is uh, add underscores to define new lines uh, or line breaks in the slides so if we try that here with the first slide we could do line 2 let's do this we get a little a larger uh, terminal here and see how it looks now ah now we, I remove the less here. Yeah, it still works. But I, I was hoping to see some. Let's add spaces in in the first slide also. Still works. Annoying. Um, It's annoying when you don't want it to work. Line number two. Okay, this. Yeah. Here you can see it wraps uh, this line. Uh, so it uh, it becomes two lines here, but it doesn't break it on the underscore as we want. It, it breaks it on some arbitrary uh, uh, column width here. And that is actually defined in by figlet. So if we do man figlet here, we can see that the W option, it, may, it, it let us set the output width uh, because Figlet assumes 80 columns. So it will wrap anything longer than 80 columns automatically. But you can override this with the W option. But even better is to use the T option here because that will set uh, uh, the output width to the width of the terminal. So let's go ahead and change that first and foremost here. And that is here in the Figlet command. We set T option here. And now it doesn't wrap that line, this long line. Um, but we want to break on the underscores. Uh, one thing, one thing we you, you might think we could do is to replace all underscores with uh, new line characters like this. And this will kind of work. Here you can see slide one and sl line number two. There are two lines now separated, but uh, there's not centered uh, pretty in my opinion, because now we get this, you know. <laughs> Weird, it uh, added the Q there. I don't know where that comes from. Yeah, I probably accidentally added there, okay. So you see the lines are now aligned to the left. Uh, um, if we wanted these blocks truly centered, so to speak, uh, we would like the, the top line here to be indented uh, more to the right than the bottom line. Uh, and what I'm trying to say here is that we have to individually center each line horizontally. 
uh, but uh, the page itself should be centered vertically. And this means we need to break this uh, show note function into two, one uh, horizontally centering function and one, one uh, vertically centering function. So let's do that center H. We can start with that horizontal center. Uh, and here we add all the block width, the column width and stuff to, to this function and, and the, the line and height to the next function. So first we got terminal width here. But what we actually should do is add terminal width and terminal height. They can be global variables. We, we don't need to add that, uh, calculate that every time we want to center something because the terminal dimensions uh, will not change. But the block width uh, always is always different depending on yeah the, the dimensions of the block. Um, so let's add these as global variables up here in the main function. Uh, but in center H here we had block width, we add blank columns, and we add H pad. And, and just look at the previous video uh, I made if you are not following here, because uh, there we created this show note. So I will not go into the math that much in, in, in this video, so to speak. And we also want this line here which uses said to replace the beginning of the line with the number of blank spaces that we create here in this hpad function and i guess we could do local block width and hpad uh, and also block and block is equal to uh, this Uh, but then we don't reassign the, the value of this uh, variable, instead we just print this uh, formatted block uh, to standard out, so we can keep on using uh, uh, the output. And I guess it's cleaner to write it like this, I suppose. Get rid of that pipe. There. Blank columns, where did those go? Huh. Okay, show note, blank columns. I think I pasted the same line in a weird way there. Okay, whatever. Center H. Um, And we want to center each line individually, so we we should loop the lines in the slide here. Uh, so we could actually use the same technique here, using map file uh, with the T option, but here we also set delimiter to underscore, and we call this array lines, uh, and here we use slide, the content of slide as the input whoops and then we can loop for line in lines do center h line um not sure how this will look. This will probably be weird. Yeah, now we get super weird stuff here <laughs> because now we don't uh, center. Now we don't add any blank lines above and beyond. We we just center horizontal here. Um, but what we actually are creating inside this loop when we are looping the slide slides is creating pages for less to display here. So we can also create a variable here called page is equal to nothing. And then we, we append the output of uh, uh, center h here to our page. So 
page plus equals the output of center h line. Oops. Uh, and then we center the whole page horizontally. Center verti or vertically, I mean. Page. Uh, that means we also have to create this center v function. Uh, so we need block height, we need um, blank lines, we need V padding, and we need this printf thing that adds the padding around the block. also specify let's do this local block block height like lines v pad block is equal to dollar one so dollar one is the page without any uh, vertical padding mm. Yeah, I think this will work. And then it sends this page, then it goes back up to the t uh, top of this loop body, uh, and then it resets the page and add the, the next uh, slide with its uh, each line uh, uh, individually. Let's see if it works. Yeah, now they are better center, but we still get some weird stuff here. Slide two, slide three. Yeah, it kind of works, uh, but that weird stuff we got there on the first slide is because we also need to add a line break here um, before this output otherwise you get those weird artifacts um, now i think it will look better no it looked even worse maybe i shouldn't add quotes yeah of course no quotes okay this now perfect no weird artifacts and it's centered perfectly uh, one thing you notice is that we can, with less, can go back and forward with page up and page down. But we cannot go further than to the last slide, and we can only go to the beginning uh, of the slide deck. So we, we just have three slides to move across. Uh, but we can easily make this an infinite uh, uh, slide deck by adding an infinite loop here with while true do. Then we also have to close that loop, so we add it down here, so this done closes the for loop, and this done closes the while loop. And now we can, I'm pressing, I'm just holding space here, and it changes slides really quickly. Uh, but one thing we can see here is that they are moving, uh, crawling upwards, uh, and this is because uh, we are we are cheating a bit when we center the page vertically. We calculate uh, how many blank lines we need to push the block down, and then we add uh, an equal number of, of blank lines above and beyond below the block. Uh, but that is not 100% uh, correct, you know. Uh, due to the how terminals work there are no half lines uh, and also bash uh, floors uh, division so so uh, sometimes you might want to add for example 10 blank lines above and then 11 blank lines below to really fill uh, the page if you would add 10 blank lines above and 10 blank lines below then it would uh, yeah it will not be correct and th that gives you that weird result so, so we have to calculate this uh, correctly here do vpad1 is equal to blank lines divided by 2 and then we do vpad2 is equal to uh, blank lines minus vpad1 
And this will always give us the correct, uh, uh, fill the screen with a correct number of lines here. Then we have to do this individually for these two guys here. And we can change this into V, or let's do V pad. And we do V pad one, and here we do V pad two. Now I can cycle uh, infinity through uh, the slides and they don't crawl upwards like they did uh, before. And I think we make a break here in the video and the next one we uh, can look at how to use different fonts and different colors and stuff, specify that with format strings, uh, also reading input from uh, a file uh, with, for example, this uh, Arch uh, logo. But we take that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Have a great Friday the 13th. Uh, bye bye.